Hi, I'm Jacqueline Baxter, Director for the Centre for Innovation in Business and Legal Education. And today I'm talking to um, Carolyn Decker-Langer, um, who is going to be uh, talking to us about her Level 3 module, Creating Futures in Sustainable Enterprise and Innovation. Um, Carolyn, you're Chair of this module, so what do you want to talk to us about this morning? Well, I would like to talk about how um, beneficial it can be for a module team to do scholarship work on a level three module which is still relatively new. Mm. So this module creating future sustainable enterprise and innovation is the sister model of a level two module mm -hmm. exploring innovation and entrepreneurship and uh, it builds on the skills and knowledge that are taught there. Mm. So we thought in the beginning that mainly students from this module would continue studying um, creating futures. Mm. Um, however, we were wrong. So, oh. <laughs> yes, we have many students who have never studied entrepreneurship before. Okay. So they lack some skills and knowledge that we had expected that our students would have. Mm. And um, so we were not aware of the difficulties that these students were facing when they started studying this module. So for instance, they didn't know um, a tool that they should have known from um, the previous module, namely Open Studio, mm -hmm. or they should have um, known um, online student rooms in Adobe Connect. Right. So um, we saw that some students struggled with uh, some activities mm. in uh, the virtual learning environment because they hadn't studied this other module before. However, an interesting thing was that these students were highly engaged and they wanted to learn more about enterprise mm. and innovation and they were interested in sustainable management. So we thought, okay, why are these students here? Mm -hmm. How do they per perceive the activities? And how do they struggle with um, the problems that they face? Mm. So quite a lot of challenges there, mm. not least on the technical side, but also with some of the content as well. Mm. So tell us a little bit about the project then. I mean, did you take a qualitative approach or quantitative? Tell us a little bit about that side mm. of things. Well. We started with the available management information systems mm. and I think the uh, Open University has quite good systems that help us trace uh, the students' progress. Right. So we see um, in the module profile tool and in the um, SAS um, dashboard uh, whether students are withdrawing mm -hmm. and when they withdraw from a module. We also um, get some impressions on why they leave hmm. our module and uh, we can identify some pressure points. Okay. So that's quite useful. Mm. And uh, based on this, we can also ask our tutors mm. why they think that students um, withdraw or why some students are very successful and adopt very creative approaches that we had not expected. Mm. So um, combining anecdotal evidence from the tutors with secondary data can be very useful. And um, in this project that we um, have just completed, we also included predictive analytics. Okay. Which is still mm. quite new. Mm. Um, and I'm very grateful that I have access to this tool as mm. a module chair and my tutors also have access for their specific groups. Okay, yeah. And our idea was to, to develop a kind of individual fingerprint of engagement patterns. Mm. So we looked at what type of student um, adopted which type of um, engagement and submission pattern. Right. And we see this in predictive analytics. And based on s different criteria, such as task performance mm. and engagement, um, we, uh, we specified four different cohorts of students and compared their task performances and engagement patterns. And we saw that th we have very active students, mm -hmm who complete um, all the activities that are available and they have a relatively mm, stable mm. Um, engagement pattern, but they are not the most successful students. Ah, Yeah, we have other students who work in more uh, in type of, I would say, outburst of activities mm. and in weekly patterns 
um, who are more successful in terms of submission and completion rates. Mm. And we also see that these students um, are more likely to ask for extensions than uh, the other group. Right. And that was interesting to see. Um, moreover, we included real-time student feedback in our module mm. and um, we included both um, open and um, closed questions and content analyzed the answers so that we learned more about the perceptions uh, that the students have. Mm -hmm. um, how do they feel about the activities? Mm -hmm. Are they frustrated with group work, for instance, or do they like it? Mm. Um, would they like to see other tools than we provide? Mm. For instance, we piloted the online student rooms mm -hmm. in um, Adobe Connect in the last presentation and we were asked to evaluate their use. Okay. And what we see is that the feedback was positive, but students would like to see other types of social media. They prefer this because I think young people like WhatsApp and so on and they don't like okay. online rooms in Adobe Connect, but a surprisingly high number of students used them. Okay. So quite a, a number of interesting findings mm. there. Um, so wh where, do you where do we go from here then? Wh how are you going to take this forward, Carolyn? Well, we, are currently, uh, we have currently completed the second presentation of this module. Mm. And we can compare numbers from a presentation without online student rooms, for instance, mm. with a presentation that has piloted online student rooms. We see different engagement and submission patterns, but I'm a bit suspicious whether there are some spurious data right. in our findings. And therefore, I would like to adopt a longitudinal perspective and continue with the approach that we have adopted in this project. Mm. And, um, well, adopt a longitudinal perspective and compare data across presentations. Okay. So it's a long-term project mm -hmm. that looks uh, in its initial stages at mm -hmm. having some quite um, substantial findings mm -hmm. which you can use to inform the module as it, as it goes along. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, very interesting talking to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.